Okay, in this lesson we're going to look at using compound interest formulas and uh, evaluating functions with the base E. And I hope you had a chance to read some of the, the quotes that I have on this first page. I thought they were pretty um, pretty funny. And also kind of express the, the, the power of, of compounding um, when dealing with, with interest and in investments. But let's first start by looking at a simple interest problem. And simple interest, basically the formula for this is very is very simple. It's just that your um, your interest is a product of the principal, which is the money that you borrowed or the money that you invest. Obviously, sometimes you're paying interest and sometimes you are earning it. Uh, R is the interest rate as a decimal, and T is time in years. And so let's start with the first form uh, first question here. Example one. Find the interest charge if you borrow $2,000 at a simple interest rate of 6000 per annum for two years. What will you owe after two years? So the first thing we need to do is find the interest. And we know the interest equals the principal times rate times time. And the principal is $2,000. That's the amount we borrowed. The interest rate is 6% or 0 0.06 as a decimal. The time is 2 and uh, we can multiply this out on our calculator uh, or this one you could probably do in your head but let's we'll pull up the TI and, and do this out so we take 2000 multiply it by the point oh six multiply it by 2 and we get our interest which is 240 and then to figure out how much we owe we would just have our two thousand dollars plus the 240 at the end of two years, so we would owe $2,240. Now, I'd ask you to just pause the video before you try the next problem, um, and then once you get your answer, turn the video back on and um, check your answer and see how you did. Okay. So this, this problem, we, we're asked to find the interest rate if you invested $2,300 for four years in an account that earns a simple interest um, and you earned an interest of $178. So again, we're going to write down the formula. Interest equals principal times rate times time. And this time, R is our unknown. We don't know the interest rate, but we know the principal, which is $2,300. We know the interest that we earned, the amount was 178 We don't know R. And we do know T, which is, um, since it's four years, we're going to multiply by four. Right? So what I would do first is I would multiply the four times the 2300 and you get 9200 R equals 178. We'll divide both sides by 9200. So R is going to equal, we'll pull up our calculator, and we'll take the 178, divide it by the 9200. Okay. And so we get Point oh one nine oh one nine three four. We certainly don't need all those decimal places. So if we say we round it out to um, to two decimal places, we would say that the interest rate is approximately equal to um, R is equal to point oh two or approximately two percent. Okay, so on the next page, and most most um, or many investments do not involve just a simple um, simple interest, but a compounded interest, uh, where you're you're earning interest, and then that interest then becomes part of your investment, and now you earn interest on that interest. And so there is a proof here um, that you know I I have I would be posting a a video 
explaining the proof. We're not going to prove it right now. And in this class, you won't be asked to prove this, but it's nice to know where a formula comes from. So I encourage you to, you know, go to the Blackboard website and, and look at the proof that I've got posted in this unit for this. Um, but here's the proof just laid out for you. We're going to skip over this for now um, and just jump right into using the formula for compounded interest. And so um, it says here that most banks have, a pl have plans in which interest is paid more than once a year. And N is the number of times interest is paid per year. So if you compounded semi-annually, N would equal 2. Compounding quarterly, M would equal 4. Monthly, N equals 12, etc. So we're going to use a compound interest formula to calculate A, which is the amount after time. And so here's the, the example. It says you decide to invest $8,000 for six years at a 7% uh, seven percent per year compounded monthly. Use the compound interest formula to find the value of your initial investment after the six years and round your answer to the nearest cent. So the formula for compounded interest is right here. This is um, it's A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. Again, if you if you have a chance to look over that proof, you'll see where this formula comes from. And so, what you, our job right now is to figure out how do we use this formula and how do we enter it correctly on our calculator. So, we want to identify the different variables. And so, since there are more here, I'm going to list each one. So, a is our amount, and that's actually what we don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. Okay, the question said. Uh, we want to find out how much the value is worth after six years. That would be A. P in this case is equal to 8,000. R is our interest rate, but again, always is a decimal, so 0 0.07. Compounded monthly, which means N is equal to 12. Okay. And so what we're going to do, and also we need T, right? So T. Uh, we've invested for six years and T is six. So our job is to basically substitute into this formula and then evaluate it on our calculator. So P is 8,000. One plus R over N, so it's 0 0.07 over 12 to the 12 times T, which is six. And so before you type this into your calculator, uh, you don't, you never want to round until the very end of a problem. So before you type this in, I would simplify as much as you can, but we're going to rewrite this as 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.07 over 12 to the, to do the 12 times um, the 6. So we're going to evaluate that at 72. And we're going to type this into our calculator, clear out what we had there before. So we're going to take the, slide this up a little bit, we're going to take the 8,000. We can, on the TI, we can type this in almost exactly as you see it. Open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12. Close the parentheses, and then there's a caret key here, which we've looked at before with exponential functions. We want to raise to a power of 72. And then we'll hit enter. Right. And so they want us to round to the nearest cent. So our answer is 12,160 and 84 cents. So at this point, I'd like you to pause the video again so that you can try one of these on your own. Um, and then, so I'd like you to do this problem below here. And then once you get your answer, I'd want you to put, you know, start the video up again and check your work. Okay. So in this case, um, we've got a problem that is, is going to be compounded daily. We've got an amount of $12,000, um, 8% annual interest rate, and we want to know how much is in the account after five years. So I'm going to first going to write down the formula. Okay. 
and I'm going to start identifying what my different values are. So we don't know what A is. P is 12,000. I've got 1 plus 0 0.08, which is our interest rate. N is the number of towns we're compounding, and since we're compounding daily, we're going to do that by 365. And then we're going to have N times T, which is 365 times 5. And so let's pull out our calculator to evaluate this. Clear that out. And on this one, I'm actually not going to evaluate the exponent first. I'm going to show you, how, if you don't want to do that, how you can do it on your calculator, but you have to be really careful with your exponents. So I'm going to type the 12,000 and open parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 365 and we're going to raise that to the power and uh, all, um, you know, there's different versions of the TI, so my version is a little more advanced, and so it automatically assumes that everything's up in the exponent. When you use the caret key, you're going to need parentheses, so I'm going to put them in to stress that. It's going to be 365 times 5, right. and then we'll hit enter. Okay, and so we can see here that and we're rounding this one to the nearest cent also, so we're going to have $17,901.11.